Hey, Aloha Friday, and welcome to a brand new episode of Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. What does peace mean to you? Gandhi once said, peace is the most powerful weapon of mankind. So how can we inspire and foster thoughts, conversations, and learning opportunities about peace in our community? 20 years ago, Melinda Gone had a thought-provoking idea with other peers. How about we create a platform where we invite teachers from all schools, from all islands in the state of Hawaii to engage their students, starting in kindergarten, to learn and write about civil rights and peace, and everything linked to it, and share their thoughts with the community every year. Well, that's how the Martin Luther King Jr. Peace Poem Project was born. Masha Joyner became the godmother and the spiritual <laughs> advisor of this beautiful project soon thereafter, and the rest is history. Today, we'll start a new series where we get to hear these two marvelous women share their many memories of this 20-year-long journey. And the many seeds of peace that were planted and grew into the hearts and minds of our community through literacy and poetry, lessons learned along the way, dreams and hopes for the future of this precious process that engages so many spirits in the state of Hawaii in such special and different ways. On that note, welcome marvelous women to our program today. So how are you doing today, Masha? Aloha. It is wonderful. wonderful, of course, wonderful. <laughs> and uh, we have uh, Melinda joining us over the phone from Maui. How are you doing, darling? I'm very happy to be on the show, and thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, like, I think in today's world, more than anything, we need to have more platforms, not only to talk about peace and what it means, but also uh, to continue to give uh, strength uh, to existing programs that are successful, such as the one that we have here. Well, let me just add to your opening. Melinda uh, had... The first time I saw it was when in 1990s something or other, and she came for the Martin Luther King holiday, and rolled out this long, long sheet of people adding names and their poems, and so that was what two 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 years before we started the Peace Poem Project. I think that's about right. I think we came from Maui to the march uh, in 1997, and we brought the peace poem with us. Mm. It, it was at that time, at that time, you could still hold it in your <laughs> arms. <Aww. laughs> no more, it's in storage now. But um, essentially, we were uh, in the parade, and Frank Rich, who also founded the International Peace Poem Project with me, uh, came with me, and we rode in the parade in an electric car. I felt like we were really from the future. <laughs> <laughs> you all. And she and rolled out this it, long, long sheet. Oh, my gosh. Miles and miles it, of paper so people could write their poems. Oh yes, and we ask everyone worldwide to add their two lines or more to the peace poem. We're creating the world's longest poem on peace. We began this project in June of 1996, and in 1999, we decided to begin this program in the schools and invite the students statewide to write during Black History Month on peace and honor of Dr. King because of his work to bring equality for not only black Americans, but for all minorities. Right. And uh, certainly in Hawaii, you know, it's, it's really, really important because we're such a diverse population. And quite frankly, I'm a teacher and so many of our children are at risk in so many ways. So we want to elevate them and make them empowered to believe that we can make the world better. And the Peace Poem, I think, has been a wonderful tool in that, in that journey. And when did you take it to the UN? We were invited to the United Nations to present the Peace Poem for the Jubilinium of Peace on, uh, in September of 2000. So and it was wonderful. It was just a miracle for us to get there. But we did get there, and um, we presented the poem to then President of the United Nations Council, uh, Henry Holkieri. He preceded uh, Mr. Kofi Annan. And also the 
uh, First Lady of Colombia was there, Mrs. Pastrana. So we were honored to be there and to present to them and to the uh, entire <clears throat> gathering the peace poem. So I want And then we brought it back to keep working on it because we had about 15,382 lines at that time. <laughs> wow. But now we're looking at a poem that's almost 200,000 lines. That's amazing. That's so beautiful. So I want to ask you from both of you from the first year, if you remember um, how many islands and how many schools participated from uh, this beautiful uh, peace poem uh, uh, you know, event, like in the very first year? The very first well, year. Well, the very I'm... first year. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> the first year, and we laugh. The first year we emailed, at, no, at that time, and still today, we write a letter inviting everyone hard copy to, <clears throat> to all the islands, and we had uh, about uh, eight schools on Maui, and we had about, oh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 14 on Oahu the first year. We did not receive any from Kauai the first year, and we received one from the Big Island. And I traveled, and I went over to the Big Island to present that one class. The mayor's uh, representative went with me, and that was, uh, we started small, but we started big. <laughs> and, of course, in Oahu, Marsha was engaged in uh, presenting with Jeremy Harris, or two Jeremy Harris, the yeah. children that were the winners there. We had... Tell her about that, Marsha. We had yeah. 300 little children. Uh, no. Not, not 300. I think we had 300 entries, did we? Something like That's that. That's about right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so... And we selected winners from each, each class. class. So, so every there. child would have a good chance of yeah. winning. And so uh, Frank said to, Ma to me, well, Marsha, how are we going to present these awards? And I said, well, it needs to be, we need to elevate this to the level that it deserves. So I marched into the mayor's office and said, we need a, a time with the mayor so the mayor can present the awards. Fine. And we got 15 minutes. That's my place. 15 minutes. The day of the awards. This is where I get the 300. Every child, <laughs> mother, father, grandma, auntie, papa, they all showed up in the mayor's Good office. And in the mayor's <laughs> office, mind you, yeah. with the cameras and the video cameras and the whole thing. And the mayor stood there. Uh, we do have a picture of the mayor with these first little kids. The yeah. mayor stood there. He canceled the rest Was of that his. Was this first one? This one, the first year. Yeah. Yeah. He I can tell this is a digital picture because yes. you can see it all pixelated. And so he canceled the rest of his appointments. He stayed with those children all afternoon. He I'm shook lucky. every hand. He talked to every child. And the parents were thrilled. So then he says to me, Marsha, if we do this again, it has to be downstairs. So downstairs in those days was the courtyard. <laughs> And sure enough, every year and every mayor on every island has participated. And the governor, and one year we even had Senator Schatz. So we had to elevate this to the level that it deserves. It deserves, yes. And what I think it's so beautiful, yes, it's wonderful to have uh, our representatives of highest prestige and power honoring and uh, acknowledging the work of the children. But I think that the beauty of this is that the stars are the children. Yes. And it is the voice uh, of uh, very young uh, spirits who are so Powerful, you know, like I think that the adults benefit as much, if not even more, if they are in tune with uh, what the, the children are saying. You know, you really get moved by it. You know, that was my experience this past uh, Saturday when I got to hear the children reading their own poems. Well, they do. Yeah. They do. They get to read their own poems in their own way. So that you get their rhythm, their feeling about what they wrote. And 
there's nothing that compares with it, really, to listen to them. And, and some of them are, exhibit such wisdom. I, I don't, I'm not sure. Is that the right word, Melinda? That what, yes, and, and insight, and, and I think hope. You know, they, they speak hopefully of the future. That's but in terms of the numbers, for instance, in Oahu this year, I don't have the count, I think, but I, yeah, because we, we count all, all of them. We had 887 entries from Oahu this year, mm -hmm. and we had 57 uh, classes with winning students. Um, uh, our awards have gotten so large, Beatrice, that we have first place awards and second place <laughs> awards in two different venues. Right. And uh, the second place awards are different. I'll let Marcia tell you a bit about those. But um, in the first place awards, we have the Mission Memorial Auditorium, and it's beautiful there with, gosh, velvet seats and beautiful <laughs> polished wood floors. It's stunning. And... Um, we fill it up, and every child comes with their family. Every child is called to stage with their school, with their fellow students that are, if there are any that are also winning. Mm -hmm. They come to the mic and read their little award-winning poem, and everyone claps and cheers, and for a moment, that little being is a little star for peace, and really, I, you know? Yeah. That's, that's, did, that's the thing. I have to tell you about the and mission. They, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, and then they and then they cross the stage to where Marsha waits for them. With, uh, in this case, it was Miss Soon from Mayor's office, and they're awarded a certificate from Mayor. And then they go down the stairs and they get their prize, and all the children get a beautiful um, limited edition photo this, uh, poster uh, with a quote from Dr. King and a lovely picture and a memento. Yeah, this is so they weird. all get a beautiful prize. Can you get... And that's, I'll let Marcia. Yeah, that's a great shot there. Um, let's about the Mission Memorial uh, and Jeremy, Mayor, uh, Mayor mm -hmm. Harris. Uh, he had, because that building goes back to the beginning of the city, which uh, when they built in 1920, and it just sat there for years and kind of deteriorated, and Jeremy wanted it really taken care of and fixed up. And that was his last thing. And he said to me that our next year we should have the children in the Mission Memorial Auditorium. He was no longer mayor by the time we got, when it was finished. And, but he did tell me that the children should be That's there. That's wonderful. We're going to take a minute oh, break and now. be right back, okay? Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of... Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3, and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. You recycle, right? Yep, it's confusing. It's hard for all of us to recycle properly when it's this confusing. Yet recycling is the number one thing we can do for the environment and the economy. If we do it properly, we have a solution. And it's working. The standardized labels help people recycle more, and they help people recycle right. Let's recycle across America, and let's recycle right. To be part of the standardized label solution, visit letsrecycleright.org. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice, Think Tech Hawaii. This is your host, Beatrice Contemo, and we are here with We Need Poetry Miss <laughs> <laughs> episode with Marsha Joyner and Melinda Gone. So uh, you wanted to give continuity to something before we yes. got to the break. We were talking about, because Oahu has so many entries, obviously, just because we're larger. And so we have to divvy it up. So the first place winners are at the Mission Memorial Auditorium. And that's sponsored by the mayor's office. And then on uh, the second place winners are at the city council chambers 
and that is sponsored by the city council. So um, I think we have a picture of, there we are, see the seal and all the city council people yes. and the little kids. Yes, That's those wonderful. are second place winners. Yeah. And so that on the other islands, they're all together, first and second together, because they fit, <laughs> you know. And hopefully as the years go by, uh, who knows, you know, like they might be able to uh, travel to Oahu. Imagine Ooh. the children from the other islands. No, no, you no, wouldn't want to. No, 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 it's theirs. <laughs> now, that's what the dignifies, separates their mayor, their count, county council. It's theirs, their schools. Yes, we, we have awards on each, each island. island. Uh, mm -hmm. In Kauai, for instance, we. Uh, have a wonderful church that sponsors us, the Lahui Christian Church. Mm -hmm. in, on the Big Island, mm -hmm. we're sponsored, we're proud to be sponsored for many years by the Prince Kuhio Plaza Mall Center Stage. On Maui, we're uh, renting a place of country every year, the community center. And mm -hmm. in Molokai, we are at the library. And then, of course, in Oahu, we're so honored that Mayor sponsors us at the Mission Memorial Auditorium. Yeah. So we have a very diverse uh, uh, venues, and each one is unique. And but at each one, the same thing happens. The children come and they recite their poems, and they are lifted to the skies. It's amazing. Right. And the year I, that I have a short. Okay, go ahead. Hang on a second. Uh, go ahead, oh, Melinda. I, was say I have a yes. short little poem I'd like to share with please you do. from one of our big winners this year. Would that be all right? Yes, yes please. This is little Sophia. McQueen, she was from the Big Island Volcano School of the Arts and Sciences, and she's in fourth grade, I believe, and she wrote this poem. It's short, but it's full of metaphor and imagery and unusual immediacy, particularly for a child this age. Okay, when a child sings, peace comes, and all the wolves and birds and a rainbow came to sing along with the child. The wolves howl at the moon. The birds sang a graceful song with the child, and a rainbow shines upon the valley of unicorns. Ah, that's lovely. So I have a question for the both of you. So over the years, I mean, a piece can take many forms and take people, and especially children, to so many different tangents. Are there uh, themes that you see recurring in different islands uh, throughout uh, these years, and even for age group? I think because we are Hawaii, there are... What I have seen, and Melinda sees more than I do, that they talk about the environment. They talk about the ocean, the rainbows, the birds, um, all of the things that we live with every day. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a darling little one. This is from Molokai. Peace is a smile. Feeding the chickens is peace. The birds calling its mom. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, and yes, such... yes. And so many poems also are about family, the importance of family, and right. family gatherings at the beach. Uh, one little boy had a great poem from, oh, Molokai, I think, and it was about baseball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put him in the winner's circle in his little class. <laughs> uh, Wonderful. And uh, so I want to ask you, Melinda, I, I, I mentioned to you that I was going to name this uh, series because we need poetry, Miss, that you can tell our viewers about what this, you know, what this, what this quote, where does it come from and the context of it? The poem itself, or the um, or oh, the, the, the poem, I'm not sure. The encounter that you had with this young lady, and that she told you that it, it, there was a story that you told me. That, oh, yes, yeah. yes. Thank you for reminding You're me. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm trying to not yeah. give it away. <laughs> I was speaking two years ago to the mother of our grand prize winner from Maui. Her, the little one's name was Iris Riverstone. And um, I was speaking with her mother, Heather, and we were talking about why the contest was important and 
We both had beautiful ideas about it. She's also a teacher, in fact, a homeschool teacher. And then I turned to Iris and I said, why do you think it's important, Iris, to have this contest? And she simply said, because we need poetry myths. Oh, that's lovely. And we should. And it just, oh, catches my throat because yeah. it's true. You know, there's so much going on. I'm a teacher and I speak from my heart and also from my environment as a teacher, but we're so involved with technology and there's so many ways in which we're encouraged to work with a technical system within the classroom and, you know, I for one am sick at heart at the loss of, pe of the children being, not being taught cursive mm -hmm. uh, writing. I think that there's a, a connection that is lost when you don't write. Um, and then, of course, art and writing and writing poetry is often that intimal link within yourself. So these kids need that link, and I think they do need poetry. And as a teacher, I've learned to teach poetry, and, and the kids love it. If it's presented the right way, the kids love it. Because they get to really speak their truth. And poetry, the beauty of it is now, particularly, poetry has no rules. You know, you can do blank verse. Uh, you can do haiku, you can do a free form, these kids can do rap poetry. It's just marvelous what now uh, they can express if they're encouraged to. One, one little and that's why our teachers are so important. We oh. have so many returning teachers, and without our teachers, the peace poem wouldn't exist as it stands with the children because year after year, these teachers come back and they tell us how important our project is to them. It's and, wonderful. And one little girl. Yes, one little girl said to me, as we were walking, walking her off the stage. She said, "I know you," and I said, "You do?" She said, "Yes," and she won the award when she was in kindergarten, and then this year she was in the ninth grade. But she remembered me. It's so wonderful. Yeah, she, <laughs> yeah, she was so and darling. She's back. And she's back. Yeah. And, she was, yeah. but, and she's back. And was it Maui? And, and we do find that. We, yeah. do, we do have these kids that, that come back. And the thing is, we have such an impartial judging system. We read and judge every single poem. And this year, I think about 1,800 oh, students entered yes. statewide. Well, now, um, what was a little boy, I think it was Maui, that won in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade? That is correct. <laughs> he was in... He was inspired. And he back year after year. <laughs> yes. And what happened is he's a little poet, and he yeah. just some these we have found them. More importantly, they have found us. And so I have a couple of questions for the both of you before uh, we wrap up with this first part of our series. I mean, you kind of told me a little bit that you do read uh, all of the entries. What is the selection process like? How do you even? How can you possibly even choose, you know, a winner? Because it sounds like just by the virtue of writing and entering itself, everybody won already. <laughs> but how do you, how do you, how do you narrow it down? Well, we actually, I actually have developed a list of instructions for our judges, which they are all required to read and sign before they begin judging. Mm -hmm. I have, <laughs> I have a judging weekend at my home. And basically, I set up three rooms, and we had 11, 11 judges this year over the course of two days to do the judging. And we asked them to look for originality, clarity. Um, it does not have to rhyme. We're, we're happy to have images. We're looking for haikus. Um, we're looking for specific entries that have specifically have an allusion, if possible, to Dr. King or to Mahatma Gandhi or any of the great peace leaders. But they don't have to, as the poem you just heard did not. But, so we're looking for originality and for a true expression of uh, seeking of peace. And we have uh, teachers and writers and artists and, gosh, I've got a professor, a retired professor from the college and retired principal that is our Hawaiian judge. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, for the first time, we had a Hawaiian, a Hawaiian poem with an English translation as our grand prize winner for Oahu. Right. And that was a wonderful thing. We hope to have more Hawaiian language entries next year. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and we had many from, from Maui. Uh, we have a wonderful... Um, 
school, Paia Elementary, mm -hmm. that has uh, entered Hawaiian language poems now for several years. And of course, for Molokai, we would be remiss if we did not mention uh, their Hawaiian poems, such as Miss Marcia just shared with you. And, yes. and she might share another one. Yes, I have, I I have, have tons from does. Molokai. But the, the cutest thing, one year, uh, year 16, was it 17? This kid, the winner, he read his poem beautifully in Hawaiian, but he wasn't quite sure of the English. I thought that was just the cutest thing. And then that year we had the well, representative yeah. from, from OHA and the legislature. I mean, everybody came from Molokai. And it was mm -hmm. wonderful because those children really, um, I, I don't know if, Mol if it, Hawaiian is their first language or if we'll call it a primary language because they, they function in Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. And it's well, wonderful. Well, at that time there was uh, Hawaiian immersion language. Several of those are Hawaiian immersion languages classes, and those children um, do not speak English in the classroom. Right. So it's very, very interesting to, at least those that I am familiar with, let me uh, amend what I say. Yes. Um, so be, uh, before, wait, 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 wait. before we come to an end, we have time yet. No, we don't. We're so we are very short in time. So I'd like for you to we, read. We gave us 15 minutes. I, I would like for you to read the one poem that you may have to share with okay. our viewers. Well, Eric, can you see this one? Because we talked about the uh, images that the little kids. No, I guess it's not. It's too, showing, too fair. Yeah. Too, it's not. It's too fit. But, but would you be able to read the poem? Yes. It's. Okay, so like why, to read why, yes, go yeah, ahead. While Marsha goes into the poem, uh, I think that the one of the beauties of uh, this is that every child has a chance to speak from their own perspective, and from their own, you know, truth, as you mentioned, Melinda. And I wonder if you can tell us a little bit about the children that you know join, like their walk of life, uh, and how much. Uh, this experience have impacted some of the children that were able to give you feedback, whether they were going through some adversities or they ended up feeling more inspired or won scholarships or opportunities because of this chance. Do you have any examples? Well, I, I, thank you. Thank you for yeah. asking me for that. Um, uh, I'll share a couple of stories. I was in Molokai uh, at the awards this year, and one of the mothers came to me and said that her child was one of our former winners several some years back and is now going for a PhD at Cornell. And uh, she felt that winning in our contest was one of the many elements that had helped her child, you know, push for the top. So we were happy to hear that. And uh, we're always happy to hear of our students yep. doing well. That's I know I had a... Personally, I had a little boy in my classes some years ago, uh, and I, as some teachers do, watched this little boy go homeless, and then his father struggled to get back to a home. And I have had all my kids enter the contest, and he was one of the winners from my class. Oh, so at the end of the year, at the end of the year, I had given all the students a questionnaire. You know, what was the most important thing that happened to you in school year and he wrote down winning the Dr. Martin Luther King Peace Poetry Contest and he wrote every word and that made my heart sing to oh, think that you know we had given that child something real to hold on to. We are and, out and of we time have, but we have you we have no, one more poem. You, have to, you, you have to give us a poem. Yes, yes. we have time. No we don't. Okay. We, don't we are out of time. It's so it's it's now or another We're, episode. Okay. <laughs> Peace feels like soft cotton like the clouds. Peace smells like flowers that smelled so sweet. It looks like a furry rabbit outside. It tastes like vanilla ice cream at the store. It also sounds like quiet and peace. This is a second grade <sighs> in Molokai. That's Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Marcia. Well, thank you and both. Thank you, Beatrice. Absolutely. Thank you both for being here. And uh, I hope you come back so we can give continuity to this and continue to give the platform uh, to the children, especially. And my hope also is that five years from now, 
You have a symposium, <laughs> a peace, you know, poem symposium, where each year that you do the symposium, all of the kids from the other islands and all of the mayors can travel together for one day and also have that power. And until then, that you may continue <laughs> to do this in each island as marvelously as is already happening. Well, thank you so much. And I thank our viewers for watching us. And uh, I hope Thank you for, for this great opportunity. I do want to say to everyone out in Radio Land, the children do not have to enter through a classroom. They can enter their peace poems by sending them straight to me at peacepoem.org, and I'll put them in the contest. Perfect. Got it. Okay. Thank All right. you. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.